Also, OK. OK. OK, it's a uh, great uh, pleasure to introduce you, Claudio Gatti, uh, on the Axiom program of Quarks and Flash. I, I guess some people are still taking the, the results. Yeah. I hope that they are not all positive. <laughs> it will be 50%. Right. <laughs> and hopefully they are not coming back if they are positive. <laughs> Very good. Uh, take your time. You have an hour. So. Okay. Thank you, Yanis. So as the title says, it's, I will tell you about the, the program in Italy about axiom physics and uh, wax that is a, an experiment that is now running or close to start uh, running and um, in flash, which is our proposal. And no, no. Ah, okay, because I didn't put, okay, doesn't matter. So uh, yeah, the, the outline, uh, it's uh, quarks, uh, it's, uh, it's a, the, those are two holoscope, both. Quarks is operating at 10 gigahertz and there are two experimental sites, uh, Frascati and uh, Legnaro. And why flash? It's a proposal for a for a large um, holoscope, very large holoscope. So um, the concerning quarks, uh, is a, there are two experimental sites uh, at the two uh, natural labs of INFN in Italy. So this is, this is the lab of Legnaro, and this is uh, close to Padua, and this is uh, the lab of Frascati, close to Rome. And you see the Gianni Carugno, uh, the, the, two, the two groups with, with the two, uh, let's say, dilution refrigerators of, of the, of the holoscopes. So uh, quarks has, uh, um, I mean, let's say, we started for, with a, a way to detect the axion electron coupling. So it now it's called the quarks AE or AA in Italian, okay? And uh, so it, it's, it's still a holoscope with a cavity, but inside there is a paramagnetic material. So you, and you exploit the axion uh, spin coupling and you do a kind of electron spin resonant experiment. While uh, the, the axion photon coupling is done with the usual empty cavity. Now, the, let's say the, the approved experiment by NFN is actually is the axion photon coupling because it's the one with the higher sensitivity. While this is uh, still in a R&D phase because uh, one should increase the volume of, uh, of, uh, and the number of spins inside the cavity. So there still needs some R&D to, to reach the, the sensitivity to QCD axion. So I, I will focus in the rest on the axion photon coupling. So we started an R&D uh, six years ago, something like that. And uh, you see where the first result we published was in 2019, we just as a, this is in, in Legnaro, we, start, we started first with the holoscope in Legnaro. So just a small field to Tesla in a liquid helium cryostat, a uh, uh, so a cryogenic fact. You see the noise temperature about 10 Kelvin. But we, we, uh, we did this measurement with, the, with this new cavity. It's a superconducting cavity. It's copper spattered with the niobium titanium. This was done in, by INFN. And uh, we could reach a quality factor, or let's say, a, a, up to six Tesla, a factor from two to four better than copper, okay? And uh, then we moved to a dilution refrigerator. We bought uh, a magnet with an eight Tesla field. And we use also JPA from a collaboration with uh, Nicholas Rock. And uh, so with the uh, one Kelvin noise, and uh, in this case, we could go very close to the KSVZ sensitivity of the QCD axioms. And here the frequency, the frequency is uh, 10 gigahertz. And 10 gigahertz means that the quantum noise is quite large. It's almost uh, half a Kelvin. Uh, losses uh, are, are larger in cavities and also in, uh, in, uh, in devices, uh, and the volumes are smaller. So it, it's hard to go down to the FSD uh, at this frequency. 
Then we did some R&D still on cavities. Uh, we came out with this uh, um, dielectric cavity. I will say something later. And, uh, and finally, and I will talk about this, uh, the, the run we did last year, and we just put it on archive. It's uh, with the eight Tesla field, a dilution refrigerator, a Tupa amplifier, and uh, this dia dielectric cavity. And now we are, we are uh, at the KSVZ uh, sensitivity. Okay, so we made, the, uh, we made a search and we made some tuning with a Sapphire tuner. I will show you now. The... So this was the R&D that took us to this, uh, let's say the, our goal sensitivity. So now it's a, it's a matter of uh, like do some automation to, to run the experiment and start, um, and start uh, uh, probing uh, one gigahertz larger region at that frequency. So this is the setup we used uh, last year. This is the, the dielectric cavity uh, at 10 millikelvin. Uh, well, actually temperature was about 100 millik. And you see here the two amplifier from this uh, collaboration with Nicholas Rock. And um, you, there are three lines. So one is the output line for the amplification where you have the hemp and the tupa. And uh, here is a line that you can use to pump uh, the tupa. Uh, or both of them, of those two, are used to calibrate the systems. So, so to, to understand, okay, the quality factor, the coupling, but also the, the, um, the, the, the gain you, to measure the gain, okay? So, to, and this is our, uh, looks like a lamp actually, but it's a dielectric cavity. There are these two hollow uh, sapphire cylinders. And uh, now this is a large cavity and uh, for, for 10 gigahertz. And in fact, what we are using is a mode that is not the usual TM010. So it's just one single lobe of electric field, but in a, in a simple cavity, it would be the electric field, something like this with three lobes. So it's a TM030. But then when you, when you put the, the sapphire cavity, the important thing is that you suppress the magnetic field at the, on the copper wall. And this means that you have no currents. I mean, the currents on, on this uh, copper wall are really suppressed and so the, the losses. And in fact, uh, and in fact, what we did was to measure this cavity uh, at four Kelvin in a, in a magnetic field, and uh, we measured a quality factor uh, starting around six or seven million. And then, for some reason that is not completely understood, maybe to impurities inside the sapphire, but. I mean, for our purpose, it doesn't really matter. You go up to 9 million when you apply up to eight tests. Okay, this was a really, really nice. You lose something in the, in the coefficients that, that uh, let's say the coupling factor of the axion to the cavity mode, but the end more or less you, you are at the same level that, than in a standard axion cavity. This is the tuning system we use. There are three of these small sapphire bar that just go inside the mode and can shift the mode by about one megahertz, okay? Without affecting the quality factor or, or the coupling to the axis. Now concerning the two part, this comes from the Neely Institute in Grenoble. You see the, okay, just the box. Okay, this is the two part, these are circulator. And um, it, it is a, it, this is a small transmission line, a few, a few millimeters, but it's composed of a seven, 700 cells of this uh, um, loop of Josephson junction. Now, each of these is a Josephson junction. They are asymmetric, okay? And uh, so what happens when uh, this is a nonlinear transmission line? When, uh, if you send, uh, so nonlinear means you can mix uh, frequency and you can uh, take energy from one frequency and and uh, take it to another frequency. So if you send a pump signal inside here and your signal from the cavity that you want to amplify, it comes out the solution is a sum of three signals, the so-called pump signal and idler, 
With this relation in frequencies, kind of energy conservation, you get two pump photon and you end up with one uh, signal photon and one idler photon, okay? And um, so this is uh, the same as, as you have in a JPR more or less. But then the problem is here you're also traveling. Now this is good because you are not resonating and so you can, you can be broadband, no? But you, 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 you have to keep the, the same phase between the pump and the signal. Now, since they are a different frequency and, and they are in a nonlinear material, they, they have a different velocity. There is a dispersion. And you have two kinds of dispersion. You have a simple dispersion that comes from a relation like this that depends essentially on the capacitance of the Josephson junction. Not, not, so not really on the nonlinearity of the system. And, uh, and, it, and uh, is, uh, with respect to, let's say, to the pump frequency, gives you something like this, okay? Like a parabola and gives you a, a positive contribution to this uh, mismatching phase. Then there is another term, the, the Kern term that comes from the nonlinearity in the inductance of the, of the Josephson junction. And you can tune it with the, with the magnetic field, with the external magnetic field, uh, you can make it negative. And then if you engineer a bit the, the thing, it can be done in such a way that this term is negative and cancel this term in, in some region of your frequency space. So you see, this is the, the, the dispersion term, this one, and this is the negative curve uh, dispersion, this is zero. So in two point you get of frequency, no? you get exact matching in the phases. And in these two points, you are obtaining uh, a nice amplification. Okay, so this is the reason why of these bumps that we do observe in our device. This was, was tested and, and characterized. And uh, um, so we, we, do, uh, we do have about 20 dB amplification. Uh, but the, the other noise by the tupa is not zero, but it's a, it's a two photon. So it's a bit more noisy than uh, than a standard uh, JPA, for instance. So the, the total noise at the end would be is uh, two Kelvin. This is what we, we measure. And uh, maybe perhaps this can be improved at lower frequency is, is better. Um, uh, concerning the signal extraction, well, first we do the hypothesis of no signal at all. So we, we just, check that there is a, that everything is in agreement within the chi-square statistics with a, with a no signal excess in the power. And then uh, to extract the, the, a limit on the coupling, if we, if we pass the no signal test, uh, we do a fit. This is simulated data with, a, in a, let's say, with a, a synthetic axion. And uh, the black line is the fit that takes into account the, the cavity temperature. This is negative because the cavity has a temperature that is a bit lower than the surrounding uh, circulator or, or whatever, or, or 50, 50 ohm resistors. And so you get, let's say, a drop in temperature. And uh, this is the real data, this is the fit. Uh, and uh, from this, we extract for, uh, for all the runs, so we extract the the coupling constant with the, with the error and we set the limit. And so we, you know, we cook our, our data and we end up with this plot uh, combining the, the, these 10 different runs. Uh, they, they took about 10 hours of data taking. Mm, we are right now around 0.5 megahertz per day as a, as a scanning array, which is not much. We, we plan to increase, uh, we are buying a new, um, a new magnet for the linear at 14 Tesla. So this will help. And clearly uh, reducing the, 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 the two photon noise from the Tupa will, will also help in, in going, but we plan to go at least at one megahertz or more. So, so in this way, in two, three years with two holoscope, we can cover one gigahertz range in, with a reasonable uh, data taking time. Okay, and so you see we are here at, at the KSVC um, uh, sensitivity. So this is on the archive right now. 
Now, at the same time, well, at the same time, uh, a couple of years ago, we started also setting up the Haloscope in Frascati. So there is some delay with respect to Legnaro. You see the insertion of the nine Tesla magnetic field. This has a contour coil for canceling the, the stray field. No? So you can put your electronics there. And uh, this is a small standard copper cavity at 8.5 gigahertz. Uh, and this is a picture taken during the operation of a, of a first test run. We had some problem with the magnetic field also, but now hopefully we have solved them. And uh, this is, a, I mean, we are still in a commissioning phase. So we, we, this is the sketch of the final setup and uh, with the magnetic field uh, uh, shield, uh, they, this arrived just one month ago. So here it is. And uh, this is the cold finger with the sample holder. And here it is. And uh, these are the step motors, the piezo motor that you, we can use to rotate the bar and, uh, and tune the cavity. And uh, this just arrived uh, one month ago. It took one year to have uh, this object. And uh, essentially now we have all the pieces and we are going to assemble it uh, next month, this month, next month, okay? And uh, for September, we, we will start uh, around hopefully being able to, to tune, uh, okay? And uh, we had a first run with a, with a low field because we had some problem in cooling. We had a single pulse tube and uh, well, it's, it was, uh, so we had some problem when, when sending current uh, to take it to four Kelvin. So we bought a new one. Now everything is working. We also had some problem with the current leads. We changed it, we tested, they are working and hopefully we will arrive at the end. I don't know. I, I think the Yannis knows the story. <laughs> it's typical of experimental, but at least with this more run, about one hour run, we, we arrived to this uh, sensitivity, okay? but. We, we hope this year to, to arrive to KSV system. And uh, the plan for the next year, in fact, this was this, uh, this run with this uh, large temperature also because of this uh, warming up of the four Kelvin plate. And, uh, but in this, uh, this year, we, we should be able we, just with a hemp to, to arrive somewhere here, which is a factor five from KSVZ. And then if we put a JPR or a TUPA, and, uh, and then also we are doing some R&D with the other superconducting cavities also within uh, SQMS project with the uh, Fermilab. Uh, we, we, we plan to arrive. Then there are other ideas to have a pizza cavity, larger cavity, whatever, but, but then we are just a bunch of people. So we try to keep it simple as far as we can and then and also because we, we also have uh, many, many other projects we, because we, we, then we, we pay the postdoc on other projects and it's, uh, it's a mess. So the plan is, let's say in the next uh, three, four years uh, is to cover the, this region up to KSBC. So it seems to us uh, reasonable with the, with the technology we, we have right now. And, uh, but to reach this, um, uh, the FSZ at this frequency, we think we, we probably need some photon counter. I mean, the, the quantum noise here is quite large. It's alpha Kelvin. Uh, so, so we are doing some, some R&D and I will say something about this R&D in, uh, in Frascati about quantum sensor. We, we are testing, designing and fabricating uh, JPA, this is our first uh, flux JPA that we did following the, the paper by Nakamura. And uh, it was working in spot. I think it was the same as the first Nakamura JPA probably because I, I compare with the paper and I say, okay, maybe <laughs> also, but and we need some engineering. Now we have a new device. Uh, this is a two power we are doing with the in-rim. We did the second one. We are going to make the third one. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a very, it's not easy, and this is a qubit, a uh, 3D qubit. I will tell you about this later. So uh, all these devices are based on Josephson Junction. You maybe everybody knows about Josephson Junction. It's just two uh, superconducting islands connected by an insulating barrier, and you have this Cooper pairs tunneling. No? So you can have current. 
flowing without voltage drop. These are two examples of Josephson junction that are fabricated at uh, Fondazione Bruno Kessler, FBK in Trento, and uh, CNR in Rome, and we collaborate with them to make these devices. And the first thing we, we, we have done, and we, we started with, with Leonid Kuzmi, that unfortunately he left us a couple of years ago. Um, but the idea was uh, very simple. And it, it's, I mean, from the point of view of an experimentalist, it's fantastic because you only have to measure 400 microvolt voltage. That's what you have to do. Not, not complicated uh, protocols of uh, pulses and RF pulses. It's just a DC measurement. So you, you take your Josephson junction, you see this is current, this is voltage. And this is the Josephson current. So you have current, but no voltage drop. Now you can bias this device with, a, with an external current and put it close to, this, uh, close to this threshold. Here is the critical current. And after this, uh, your system just switches to the normal state in which you have a normal electrons no? and, and you have a, a voltage drop. So if you polarize your device here, um, the system is described by a kind of qubit potential. And you can have, a, for instance, one photon arriving and uh, your system just jumps out of the, of the well and goes into the normal state, okay? And, and it stays there, it doesn't go back. Now you have to do a cycle with your current. Thing. You say they are microamps. Yeah. How close are you to the threshold? Yeah, this depends on the noise. This depends on the noise. You can, if you increase the current, you lower this barrier, no? So the more you go down, the, the more you're sensitive to single fault. And, but clearly if you go to, the, to uh, if you lower too much, then you start having the tunneling, the quantum tunneling from, from the bottom of the well to outside. So the quantum tunneling is just, you have a count, but you have no photo. And so it's like a dark noise. So you want to keep it low, but not too much. This usually means about three, around, let's say three, three levels, okay? And, uh, and yeah, but then you have to make sure every, all the noise is not arriving. Uh, and yeah, that's also a problem. Um, Okay, so, so, so we did it. Now, this is the picture of a, it is just a transmission line. This is the simplest version. It was just to learn how to do it. It's, it's not optimized to be, to be a single photon detector, but we did learn a lot from it. Uh, and uh, you see, it's, that, it's just a planar transmission line. You, are, you arrive down here with a coax cable. So, so it's a traveling photon, it is, it's not a photon already in a cavity. So you, in principle, if it works, you can put it far from your cavity, way out of the magnetic field, in a, okay? And uh, if you arrive here, and then you, you and this is the uh, planar transmission line, and this is the, the Josephson junction is here. Hmm? And so, so we, we, we bias with the current, you, we just ramp the current and put it to some value close to the critical current. And here we measure the, the voltage across the, the junction. And if we have zero voltage, it means that the, the, the junction is still superconductive. And if you observe something above zero or under microvolt, it means that there was a switch to the normal, no? And that switch could be either uh, quantum tunneling or noise or, or a real photon. So we were pulsing this with short uh, few nanosecond pulses at different powers. And you see here, this is the number of uh, switches of events we observed as a function of time. Uh, is it possible to adjust the room camera such that one can see where the speaker is pointing. Uh, I think uh, the camera is, uh, I don't know, no. Where is the camera? 
Yeah, but how do I? Maybe this one? No? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt the talk. Maybe no. right we, later. We, we don't know how to move the camera, actually. No, don't, don't worry. It's OK. Oh, you mean it's the PC? No, it's, it seems like an external camera, probably. Oh, okay. They were there, but mm, I, I, I don't think I have the remote control. I, on the right opzioni della vista ah this is not from uh, not but yeah but it's not mine it's uh, it's here yeah but i cannot control it from here it's uh, because it is uh, is this one here probably Yeah, or we move all the rest. <laughs> hmm? No, I, I am on Zoom, but I'm I'm sharing the slides. I can turn on my video. Yeah, uh, I hope this is not going to. Yeah, to ruin connection and is it better? Hmm? No, it's not this one. Now, if you, yeah, but the point is that. Yeah, that, that would be the other solution. I use the internal pointer. Yeah. No, actually, now it's actually now it's fine. I, I see the screen and I see you. Thank you. Ah, OK, so you, you see my video. Yes, yes, yes. OK. Thank you. Thank hi, you. hi, Babette. Hi, <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> OK, so. So I told you this is not optimized to be a single photo on a detector, but we did have some sensitivity to few photos. Also, we had some extra noise, so the we were not in the optimal uh, situation and there were some other. So. But there is a lot of room for, for improvement. We are working on this uh, and uh, we did two more tests. Uh, every time you have some fabrication problem, uh, but yeah, we, we are going to make it. We also have a, a way to match the impedance of, of the junction to the, you now with a kind of resonator. What is your bandwidth? Input. Oh, the bandwidth uh, uh, right here, it, it could be even gigahertz, but you are not optimized. Then uh, if you want to, because what you will like, the problem here is that the photon arrives uh, and uh, you are in a 50 ohm line, transmission line, and you, uh, and you have a junction which has a completely different, I mean, you see a device with a completely different impedance. So essentially, you get absorbed and then reflected many times. And this reduces the probability to, to have a real escape. It, so in this case, you are really broadband, even gigahertz, but, but the efficiency is not optimal. So what, one solution is to have here a kind of resonator. You have a, a, a two, also a, it's, it's like a stop tuning. You have a matching in impedance and uh, you can trap the, 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 the photon inside the resonator. And so you increase the probability to, to end the sensitivity of the device. But then you, you reduce the, the bandwidth to depending on the quality factor of the resonator, maybe megahertz, few megahertz. So it depends on the design, but right now we are just thinking, okay, let's go, let's try to arrive to, to the single okay. photon. Can you explain your plot? You have N gamma in tau. What does that mean? Yeah, this is essential. It is the power we send in the pulse. But then the, the number of photons, I mean, this object has a relaxation time, let's say, of, of about 100 picoseconds. Picoseconds. Yeah, because it's really, this is a galvanically connected to the transmission line. So it's really 
relaxating very fast. And so clearly if you send a photon and after one second you send another photon, you can say you are sending two photons, right? So this is counting the number of photons in this picosecond range. So it's, it's the power you have in the pulse divided by, uh, and so on, I just, okay. But it, it, it should be correct. Mm. Also Leonid was doing the same uh, calculation in his paper, so. Um. Okay, so. So the, the other R&D we are doing is on uh, uh, superconducting qubits. Now we have seen many results in the last few years about doing essentially dark photon searches or action searches with, uh, with uh, qubits. And qubits are indeed very sensitive to microwave photons. So, so we are testing these devices. This comes for is a 3D uh, cavity in aluminum at seven gigahertz. Uh, with a silicon chip and this small, this object here is the qubit. It's just two aluminum pad with a, with a Josephson judge inside. And uh, this comes from this collaboration with, uh, with Abu Dhabi, uh, the Technology Innovation Institute. They fabricated it. And uh, here is a, on, on our uh, dilution refrigerator with filters, coax cable and so on. And we were able to operate it and use it as a qubit, do rubby oscillation and uh, Ramsey spectroscopy. So we were very glad, but what, what uh, really uh, interests us is, uh, is this. Now the qubit, uh, uh, when it's operated in this system has a frequency shift. So it has a frequency, the qubit that depends on the number of photons you have in the cavity. Now this is what known since, a paper uh, about 15 years ago by Dave Schuster, 13 years ago, is actually a paper from which we, we started this idea of, of, I mean, we took this idea of, uh, of uh, doing quantum sensing. So we are, we, we are very glad we, we could do it in our lab, okay? And uh, so it's nothing new, but for us, it is. <laughs> and uh, so you have this term that tells you that um, the frequency shifts by is proportional to the, to the, the number of photons. And this shift here in frequency is about five megahertz. So you have your frequency here was about six, six gigahertz and it shifts by five megahertz, which is enormous, right? And, uh, and you can really see, so this peak here, now I'm not going to tell you how do you do this spectroscopy on the qubit? But indeed, because uh, uh, this peak here corresponds to zero photon. This one to one photon, two, three, four, five, and so on. If you increase the power in the cavity, you see this distribution gets broader. And, uh, and all the number we measure, they, they are really in agreement with, uh, with uh, the, the expectation. Is this true number of photons in the cavity? Yeah, or, yeah. Or, or I mean, what is your efficiency? Uh, no, this is not yet. This is just a test on the sensitivity of the cube. It's not yet. A, this is just a single cavity. So, so you 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 have the qubit. You test the q. You 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 send a signal to the qubit frequency, and then you have to probe the cavity with a VNA. So, actually, these are the photons that come from from your test reading the cavity with the VNA. But, but this gives you the sensitivity to, to see. I mean, this is, and, and then we know that Dave Schuster and other people are doing. So I don't pretend this to be a single photon counter, but usually we see this for, for tests in the infrared and the fact that you can see it in, uh, in qubit. This is a, but there are many schemes that can be used uh, for a single photon for, with a qubit and we plan now to do it. Huh? Also. You don't put, so you don't put one photon, two photons inside, but you just now put th this is a, a very simple measurement you do with the VNA. So it's the simplest. So you get a, a kind of average pitch because the VNA is very slow. So you get an average distribution of photon in the cat. Okay. Oh, okay. All, all the dynamics here is microsecond, but then you are averaging with a VNA 
uh, at second. So, but, but, but really, we, we, simply with the VNA, you have to do a sweep. It's a two-ton measurement. You, you, you send a uh, continuous wave at, one, at the qubit frequency and you sweep with the VNA. And then you change the, the, the other tone and you sweep. And then you cut this, uh, you, you see some lines and you cut it and you see this absorption piece. It's, it's a very simple measurement. It's not a protocol yet for doing single pole, but really gives you the, the sensitivity of this object. It actually, it's this one. I mean, with the characterization we did to the system, we really get this, um, I mean, we do have eight megahertz and we do expect eight megahertz. It's, it's really, so this also make us confident that we can do it again at different frequencies and, uh, and also put one or two qubits and, uh, and try different schemes. So, so, but actually it's nothing new as uh, everything was published many years ago. So now one of the problem of, of this qubit in a cavity is that you have to put the qubit in the cavity. And we know that in 10 Tesla, you know, so, so either you do with the, with the other device, something that works for a traveling photon, or you have to, so one solution that we are studying in this European project with the Italian colleagues and German and English, is to have a, a kind of a um, transistor, okay? You have a three-port device. So suppose this is your transistor and you have the current going from here to here. And here you have your base, no? And if you have a photon here, through a coupling with, a, with an array of qubit, you are able to open and close the channel, like in a fan, for instance. This is the basic idea. Okay. And uh, the coupling between these two systems is, uh, is given by this uh, array of qubits. And the theory says that uh, the, the, the larger is the number of qubits, the stronger is the effect. So the, easier, the easiest is to see the signal. This is the theory. <laughs> the practice is obviously. So we, with the Yena group, they fabricated this uh, device. So you see the, the two resonator and here are the qubits and uh, indeed we, we, this was just a test we saw you have some equivalent shift uh, as you have for the qubit like this dispersive shift and we did observe a dispersive shift on let's say a change in the transmission properties of this line while sending power to to this uh, other pot. not yet a single photon but we are working on it and uh, Hopefully we will have uh, other results. No, we, we should have other results this year also. Okay, and um, yeah, the other option I, I like to, this is from uh, one of our postdocs. He just won a young researcher grant from INFN because uh, he comes from material science and he say, okay, but you can make junction that withstand up to 30 Tesla because this is kind of, uh, this is called, uh, Ising superconductor. I'm not an expert on it, but it's like in the, in the lattice, you already have a very strong magnetic field. So even if you put, and there are already some results on this. So he's uh, uh, doing like, like with the, like for the graphene and also he's exfoliating uh, monolayers of this uh, niobium selenium. And uh, he, here is one of the first tests that we did and we are going to then measure it. This is a just put on the chip. This is one of these flakes of uh, niobium selenium, and see because if, if this works, uh, really you can put a, a nonlinear element inside a cavity. But okay, who knows? Okay, let me come to the second part of uh, of the talk, which is a, this a flash proposal. This is a proposal. It was called the clash. And it's a proposal for a large holoscope in the, uh, let's say, one microelectron volt mass, so around 100 megahertz. And uh, what well, you see um, in Frascati, we have this uh, collider, it's called Daphne. It's a plus and minus collider operating at the phi uh, meson, one GV. 
And uh, th there were two experiments, large, large medium experiment uh, operating, uh, uh, CLOE, for it's a K-long experiment, and uh, FINUDA for our nuclear kaons, uh, nuclear nucleons with kaons. So exotic nuclear, nuclei. And, um, and both have uh, niobium titanium uh, magnets and uh, you see, this is the, the cloy magnet. It's uh, four, 4.4 meter long and a uh, five meter in diameter. Huh? And, uh, but with a moderate field, 0 0.6 Tesla. And uh, you didn't need much more because you only have to, to bend the low energy particles to, to measure the momentum. And average momentum is what, 100 MeV. Okay. And, uh, and this is the Finuda magnet which is a uh, smaller, quite smaller uh, with a factor two magnetic field. Now, the original proposal was done for, for the Chloe magnet because, uh, because this one was, uh, I mean, the experiment uh, ended in the 2007. So uh, we didn't know about the cryogenic system, how it was working, uh, but the Chloe magnet stopped running in 2018. So it was there operating, working with all the, software and things so so we started with the with the with a proposal uh, for clash so uh, cloy axion uh, search and uh, this is the the people and this is our archive no but then there was uh, already another proposal for for the oh no okay let, let me show you the 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 picture so the idea is to have this is the magnet you 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 take away the, the calorimeter, the drift chamber and everything, and then you, you make a large cryostat. The idea was to operate at four Kelvin, which is uh, using the same uh, cryogenic plants that cools down the, the superconducting magnet. And uh, so you just need one shield here and then put uh, the largest cavity that, that you can. And this uh, is the design that came out with the tuner. So we have, we have done, I mean, we had some funding for, from INFN to write the CDR. And uh, so there's also some technical design that we wanted to understand if it was feasible and more or less the price. That was the idea, okay? And so now what happened is that uh, the other plan for uh, the Cloy magnet was to send it to Fermilab for the Dune experiment for the near detector. And, uh, and so this at the end happened. So this, uh, the Cloy magnet is uh, now they are preparing it in 2026 will be shipped, shipped to Fermilab. Okay, doesn't matter. So, so we have the backup solution is to use, uh, we don't have the design yet, but it's to scale down to the, to the dimension of the Finuda magnet, uh, but with a larger field. And uh, and okay, so, no, so now we are working on this uh, and the name became from, uh, from Chloe to Flash, okay? Finuda magnet. And uh, we repeated the studies on, on the tunability and the quality factor and so on with standard ANSYS simulation. You see the TM010 mode. There are a few crossing with the T modes as, as we saw yesterday and uh, the idea is to make one cavity and then uh, to, to go from 100 to, to 200 megahertz and then change uh, the cavity and go from 200 to 350 megahertz, okay? That's the idea. And uh, so, unless anybody comes with a better idea, this is the, the, the basic. Uh, what, you, what is your sensitive projected sensitivity? Yeah, I will show it. Yeah, yeah. The, the concerning the amplification, uh, we, well, well, we we will stick to the same uh, MSA squid uh, used by ADMX. It is uh, supposed to be working very, very nice at, at this frequency. We are also in contact with Michael Muke that made it. And so this is a this is the the sensitivity. So it's around one microelectron volt and uh, with the two cavities. And, uh, and this arrived to the KSVZ line. Now we just made the game to say, okay, what happened if uh, I have much more money and I can make a 
100 millikelvin at 300 millikelvin cryostat. And so you, you clearly, the, the noise goes from, let's say, four Kelvin to uh, four. So you, you, so you, you really gain uh, more than a factor 10 and you can reach the DFSZ sensitivity, okay? With, the, with lower temperature, with the same setup. And that would be interesting that then it depends on, okay. And usually that all the rest of, you see, we can have, a, a, in this region, we can have a quite high quality factor just with copper. There is no problem with the, with the, <coughs> with the um, thickness of the, of the skin depth. And uh, well, the, the, the rest is all standard. Uh, so it's uh, with a, with a few minutes of, uh, of uh, taking data at each line. Okay. We also made uh, um, some, yeah, with, with the help of uh, Luca and uh, Michael, we, we did all, also, we are see the sensitivity to other models, like this is the coupling of uh, chameleons to, to photons. <clears throat> and uh, uh, same thing for dark photons. I mean, we, we are trying to, to test all the possible models. And also we, we, we gave a look to the sensitivity to high frequency gravitational waves uh, and nothing very exciting, but uh, I mean, it's, it's a, an unprobed region, no? So, and, uh, and it's a way to start looking at it. No? So as we saw yesterday, holoscopes are still a bit far from the sensitivity to primordial black holes, but the idea is, uh, okay, you, you can read the TM mode with the, with the same antenna and, uh, and you can, you have some directionality, no, sensitivity. You, you, you depend on the, on the direction of the gravitational wave. If you want to have a sensitivity also to the other direction, you, for instance, you have to exploit the TE modes. So we are also planning to have a, a, a different coupling for the TE modes. And so an additional, uh, and, and then uh, yeah, those are additional, if you want to tune, but in principle for this object, you don't need to tune the frequency. You can leave it there and, uh, and see what happens. Uh, so this is uh, more or less the estimate to the strain, which is between, I mean, it's comparable with, with the other holoscope like ADMX. Uh, now this really depends on many on many hypotheses on the duration of the coalitions and so on. And uh, a bit more detailed work was done by Luca and uh, Michael on uh, the sensitivity of a flash uh, uh, for Kelvin, 100 milli K, and even with five Tesla, it's just a game to understand how far you can go, right? It's not that we think to have a five Tesla magnet, um, but just to have an idea. And uh, here, this drop in sensitivity is due to the fact that here, the, the sweep in frequency of the mergers is very fast. So it just stays a few time in your, in your bandwidth. And so you lose sensitivity and so I'm almost done. So what, what are we doing now? Uh, the first uh, milestone right now is to understand if the magnet works and all the system, because it was shut down uh, 15 years ago, maybe should be, but yeah, you want to test. So, uh, so here is the Daphne ring. No? Finuda is right here. and. Uh, is not anymore in the original position at the colliding position interaction point, but is a uh, five meters apart. So it was disconnected by the by the pipe by the pipeline taking the the liquid helium cryogenic helium from the cryogenic system to the to the magnet. So the first thing we had to do is to take this pipeline and make it five meters longer. And inside you have a, is a like vacuum tube with more tubes inside for 70 Kelvin gas and, uh, and 4.5 Kelvin uh, helium here. Uh, and so, well, 
we did it also thanks to the our director that is supporting us uh, uh, also economically in, in, in this uh, so so there is a the people that are cutting here, it is an external company, they are cutting the, the tube, you see, and, and then they put it back. And if, if you can see the picture, it's right here. It's a very long one, and this is the new five meter part, okay? And then it was reconnected to, to the top of, of the Finuda magnet. And uh, this is how it looks finally. So this is Finuda, and this is the 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 tubes so now we are doing some leak test and so on and so this is done this was a was a part of the yeah let's say a part of the job that we we had to do the other thing is a is a these two end caps they, they are iron end caps and this is the return the return yoke of the magnet so you have to close it if you want the magnet to to go inside and, uh, and and so well, here you have some hydraulic system that with some flex pipes that you have to replace because they are 15 years old. And probably if you try to move this be, without doing that, everything will blow up and <laughs> become a mess. So uh, we, we already contacted uh, external companies also for doing this and also the internal services. And there's also work to be done on this uh, uh, power supply control system that is quite old, but is working. We are putting some new uh, national instrument stuff, and so we are refurbishing. So the, the plan is to do it um, because everything is inside the Daphne hall. So you can access while the machine is operating, and will be it will be operating this year, maybe the next, or maybe something more. It's but it's going to be shut down at some point. But in uh, this summer it will be shut down. And uh, so we will have uh, about one month for doing this job. It's supposed to be enough. And so we plan to, to have a test of the magnet uh, within the end of the year. If no major problem, I mean, if, if everything breaks up, no, but if there are no major problem if, uh, for the end of the year, we, we should have this. Uh, the, the, the answer, uh, it works, it doesn't work. So I have two conclusions. One is at 10 gigahertz. At 10 gigahertz, uh, we completed our first R&D phase uh, with Quax and we reached the KSVZ sensitivity. And uh, now we have to finalize the, autom the automation for uh, changing frequency, taking data, calibration, and so on. And we are commissioning the LNF halos. And uh, with this, we will probe this uh, one gigahertz wide range at 10 gigahertz at the KSVZ sensitivity. And as I told you, it, it's quite tough here. I mean, you have small volume, uh, larger losses and so on. And so we need some improvements or so some more R&D on uh, single photon cavities uh, and so on. And concerning the, the 100 megahertz conclusion, our, as I told you, our milestone is to put the magnet back in operation and see if that it works. And then at that point, we, we will have to go to for an approval. So set up a, or expand the collaboration. There are a few people, but if you want to join, uh, you are welcome and, uh, and, and then go for an approval. So the, the, the price, the four Kelvin solution is uh, for, for for this kind of experiment, I mean, you, you have the magnet, you have the refrigerator, and you're already in a lab with the service and so on. So the price is about two, 2.5 million plus inflation, I don't know. But that was the price that was estimated for, uh, for, for Clash. And then there will be like a three year for design and construction and a few years of operation. And that's the plan for this. Hey, Claudio, so if you can come back to the slides concerning the qubit inside the, the cavity yeah. uh, that you say was put inside the cavity. So there is a, a clear position where it was put. Yeah. And, then, yeah, sure, sure. and then there is a second question. When you show 
the sweep of the frequency uh, is S2 one parameters. So it seems uh, is only one sweep, one sweep, but there are several peaks. Now, these several are, these are the, the sweep are uh, on the other, uh, on the other, the, the VNS sweep, the VNS sweep are on the other direction. On the orthogonal direction, this is the sweep on the on the qubit uh, uh, frequency. Uh, is is a two tone measurement? Uh, yeah, this is a, it's it's cleaner if you cut the plot. You see, you see, and the position. This uh, depends on the. This have, has a. So the, the antenna is like here. You have a dipole in this direction, and so you you take the the te zero or whatever. Yeah, this is a, at the center, so it is uh, close to the um, maximum of the of the cavity electric field mode. But you can also put it a bit farther. I mean, there, there are uh, also you can put it here, and you can couple to other modes. So, yeah, there are, there are the ideas also to use it. There is some paper using this system to do quantum memories. So there is a way to. There is a protocol to transfer the excitation from the, the state of the qubit to a cavity mode that is uh, under coupled with the, with the antennas. So it can be maybe millisecond uh, lifetime. No? So the, the, there are papers in which uh, with a protocol, you can transfer the qubit information from here to the cavity and so have a longer lifetime for your quantum state. So, and, and this is done by, <laughs> shifting the qubit a little bit aside and then coupling to two different modes. So there are many possibilities. Any other questions on Zoom? Can, can you go to slide eight? Eight? Yes. Right. The, this is the quality factor you have achieved. Right. I mean, this is a major breakthrough. Yeah. Uh, why don't you scale up this uh, method? Now, the problem here is that, uh, I mean, if the axion uh, has a quality factor of 1 million, unless uh, Pierre uh, tells us that uh, it's uh, 10 to the 10, then uh, you, you can operate. You cannot operate the 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 cavity at this uh, high quality factor because also you, we try. We, we still don't know how to do the analysis because usually when you do the analysis, you you want some sideband that tells you the the temperature of what is around, and then and then you now you we kind of talk. sideband Very subtraction. Good. I got it. I, we should talk. So right now we are operating at three hundred uh, thousand. Right. And the beta is about 20, the coupling. Right. So you, you're a bit faster. But uh, this with the qubit is a winner. Hmm? With, with a qubit, I mean, a single photon detector is a, a winner. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it could be also a possibility. Right. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? Yes. Thanks. Um, can I see the dark photon constraint? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I'm curious why, like, in the middle of the of the constraint, you have this extra peak here. Ah, yeah. this one. This is the when you change the cavity. We we are supposed oh. to have yeah, yeah. I to see. to for, with the first cavity you go from a hundred to two hundred megahertz, and and then if you want to, I mean the 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 base idea right now is to it's faster to change a cavity. Ah, okay. Even even if large, it's faster. But then I mean, if there is people with the other ideas, uh, they are welcome. It's, uh, it's just a simple solution we, we could just do. Okay, thanks. Did you, did you have a question? Uh, no, no, she, she was first. She, she was, yeah. 
Um, thanks for the very nice talk. Um, I wonder for your superconducting qubit, are you mainly using it to do single photon detection? Is that your? Because um, I've heard some proposals using superqubit to, to directly look for dark matter, because dark matter can break the qubit, giving you a current. Um, but that sort of proposal requires a lot of qubits. Yeah, yeah. Th there are there are proposals for uh, also for dark photons. Mm -hmm. uh, or think, like or axiom. I think or the latest like... is just for direct excitation of the, of the qubit Bits, by a dark yes. photon. Yeah, so that that, that seems correct. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, maybe maybe the 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 noise they estimated uh, maybe it's I mean if you don't put any noise you can be as sensitive as you want. Yeah, but but, but also... it's reasonable. Uh, may, maybe the yeah some of the limits are a bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you think it's not as good an idea? No, no, it is. It is. No, okay. I, I would like to try it also in, okay. in principle. But, but yeah, yeah. Um, sure. I just do you know how many qubits need to be involved? Ah, how many? Well, yeah. well, in that case, you 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 also have to decide how to tune your system. So it's, I mean, I mean, one qubit is enough to have some. What is it? One qubit is enough to you. You can also use this system here. It's it's fine. And uh, so so you, you don't like in the axion usually or, or in the Schuster paper you have the dark photon exciting the cavity. In this case, uh, you have the the dark photon is like an electric field and is exciting directly. The there is a probability that that you you flip the the qubit. Okay. And uh, and then you have to do a protocol, read it, and so on. And uh, but so in principle, one is enough to do a line, a line as large as the, as the qubit uh, as the qubit uh, frequency. Then what you can do, you can use instead of a qubit, maybe you can use a DC squid. I mean a qubit with two squid, and you can tune the frequency of the qubit. Okay, even if the cavity is at the same. I mean. You depend on the, the tuning from the cavity uh, from the cavity frequency, but not that much. You have some freedom. I mean, here the, the tuning is one gigahertz, so maybe you can tune for fifty megahertz without having too much problems. And so one qubit could be enough uh, to scan. Uh, then, if you want to uh, to be faster, you you can put as many as your dilution refrigerator and. Yeah, how many RF lines you can put in your refrigerator? Yeah. 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 The problem here, you you don't have the the quantum noise because you are just counting the the number of photons. So you, it's not a amplitude phase measurement. Yeah, and if you go to one get to ten gigahertz, the quantum noise is a 0.5 Kelvin. Which is about a factor uh, fifty higher than your base temperature of the dilution refrigerator. So you you throw away three hundred thousand euros <laughs> for the quantum noise. But yeah, this is really it's you you can have this uh, excitation of this uh, two two level system. Um. I have a question back to the quality factor uh, that we were just, to, to, to what, the sorry? quality the quality factor that we were just discussing previously the Q value but eight. Eight. Ah, the, the, oh, the quality factor yeah I, I'm a bit confused I would think that even when your quality factor surpasses that of the axion it's you good. still it's good you still gain in sensitivity yeah. you don't you don't gain as much as you do when it's below but you yeah still gain. but the, the point is is a uh, is 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 not simply this. I mean, in principle, if if you if you were in an ideal world where all the temperatures in your system are the same, your power spectrum is, is, is supposed to be a constant. No, so you just use a straight line and you do your residuals, right? And if you see some variation, you can say it's an axiom. But then what happens is that is that then you have something like this. You have your cavity, which is probably well connected to the, to, to the mixing chamber. So it's a 
let's say, at the lowest temperature possible. But then you have circulators and attenuators and other things that may have a little higher temperature. If you see in this picture, this is a, okay, maybe this is a, an estimate with a thermometer and you never know. Now, even if you calibrate thermometer, but, but you can have, I mean, this is the estimated temperature at least. And it, here the temperature is a bit different than this one. So you have the, the, the temperature here is reflecting from the cavity and it's giving a higher level of, of power that you have, uh, you see here, you see? So this is the center of the cavity in which everything is absorbed and thermalized. And, but as you move away from the cavity, you, you see a higher temperature. And uh, it, so you understand that if you reduce this, curve to a single point, uh, well, it's hard to say if there was uh, some variation of temperature of the cavity or, or uh, no, it's to, hard to, to... to make it simple. He doesn't know if he, there is an axiom. He cannot differentiate. Uh, it's a signal to noise. How do you know you yeah. have an axiom? Think about it. Because, because if I have something like this, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Please. No, you can see the axiom. But if you have a single point, like just a single line, it's right. harder. Yeah, so that's right. There is a question on Zoom. Could you click on it, please? Number four. Uh, please, please read. The size of the line where you talked about the barrier of the job. How did the peak of this barrier change with the current? Ah. Uh, well, with a, well, some power law. It's you. You have a threshold, and it varies with some power law. It's or it, yeah, it's not. It's not exponential. If uh, I may be wrong, I, it's some power law. If I remember. Uh, well, okay, but the, the problem is the noise. In any case, in not how fast it goes. The problem is that if you have some noise, and, and then the problem is, is the quantum tunneling that, that, is, that is exponential. That's the point. So you change the barrier even linearly, but then the tunneling is exponential because it's a, it's a standard BKB solution. Sorry, there, there was an answer, a question from Zoom. Ah, okay. So, okay. So. so you very nicely showed um, the current biased uh, Chosen junction as single photon counter and the qubit. Now, the obvious question to me is what is the sensitivities? What do you guess will give the larger sensitivity for the photon counting of these two technologies? Okay, the, the, well, we hope to reach, I mean, the qubit, we know they have a single photon sensitivity. Now, the problem with, this, with the qubit is that Present schemes uh, work well if you put the qubit inside the cat. So, so you see results for um, dark photons, but you still don't see any result for axioms because you have a 10 Tesla magnetic field, okay? I think the only thing that was done by Nakamura is in the, in, in the case in which you have lower field uh, in which you have the magnon qubit coupling, okay, for axioms. But, but not in the, in the standard axion photon uh, configuration. So, so either you, you have a, a Josephson junction uh, with this uh, Ising uh, superconductor that you can put in a, in a 10 Tesla magnetic field, or you have to take your photons and uh, let it travel through a coax cable and take it to, to your, inside your niobium box or whatever, and uh, where you screen the outside field and you put your device. So, uh, so those are two different, so for sure the, 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 the qubits has a single photon sensitivity. That's proven. Great, thank you very much, uh, thank you. Yeah, no, it's... Yeah.